Fans are always asking for that one game from Xbox, the one cinematic story-based third-person open-world action-adventure game. Xbox has routinely delivered the best in class for first-person action games and racing games, but it always seems like the third-person, over-the-shoulder PlayStation formula look-alike is missing from the Xbox equation. Looking at the trailers and gameplay reveals, it looks like first-person perspectives are top on the menu, while fans are asking to see the entire character in something big and blockbuster worthy. New information about Xbox Game Studios has revealed that Xbox has big plans to give fans what they've been asking for, and it is coming soon. This is Colt Eastwood, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Matt Booty and third person action adventure games, something that has been sorely needed on the Xbox platform. And today we have new information about that finally becoming a reality. If you enjoy this video, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel, hit the bell to be notified of new content, and let's talk about these third person games on Xbox. Xbox Game Studios is working on nearly 30 different projects right now between the first party studios and global publishing for second party exclusive releases in the Xbox series console generation. Among these games, well over half of them are not first person perspective, which is surprising as this seems to be often repeated. Xbox only has first person shooters. As Xbox dives fully into game creation and game release modes, new details and info has been shared by enthusiastic studios ready to start discussing their games in the works. One studio that is one of the only wild cards in the suite of 23 plus teams is Compulsion Games. Compulsion has not released a new game under Xbox, and their last two games have not rated very well, nor have they been wholly popular. Recently, Compulsion Games revealed that they are working on a third-person, action-adventure story-based game for Xbox. Niall Haja said, We have doubled the workforce and we are adapting to it. The goal is to expand our zany universe to continue to make our mark in video games as a studio that likes to make unique games in little-used settings. For now, that's our goal. Pursue our legacy, our heritage, while remaining true to ourselves." Close quote. The zany universe she is referring to is the stylized and exaggerated wonder of period-based worlds, much like We Happy Few, which takes place in a psychedelic alternate 1960s where the big government in the UK has control and watch over the people by keeping them satiated with a happy pill called joy. The quirky nature of keeping the citizens' memories of World War II and the Nazi invasion repressed with state-mandated drug intake grounds the compulsion-created universe in serious overtones, but the visuals keep you under its spell. Compulsion's new open-world action-adventure game started development in late 2016, and as since then, the studio is picked up by Xbox, has doubled the size of the team, and asked Xbox for a much bigger budget than the crowdfunded early access funding model they worked with for We Happy Few. Due to this new game's narrative nature, Compulsion Games is working on a full-fledged, story-based dark fantasy third-person game that will see full development under the Xbox publishing criteria and release as a conventional full title, not preview or early access. She says, with our new game, a narrative third-person story game, we know where we are going. A dark fantasy genre is right in line with what we have been hearing from several studios in the Xbox Studio lineup with Avowed, Hellblade 2, and parts of a new Fable game. One thing Niala could confirm for the new Compulsion game is that they have no idea when Xbox fans will get to see the game. Rest assured, Xbox has plenty to show and release before that time comes for Compulsion's new third-person dark fantasy game. State of Decay 3 was first showcased at Xbox's E3 in 2020 with no release window, but we do know that Undead Labs has intent to elevate the game in maturity and production values, now that the studio is fully supported under Microsoft and Xbox Game Studios. Recently, the studio founder and lead Jeff Strain left Undead Labs in 2021. In an interview with IGN, Strain says that, quote, State of Decay is still on its way to achieving its ultimate vision, and praised the developers working on the game. He also commends Microsoft for the way it has managed its own studios, including Undead Labs, over the last few years. The vision for State of Decay is a quote, 
full online world that will allow thousands of players to run around simultaneously in a much larger server-hosted world." End quote. State of Decay has always had grand ambitions as a series, originally being a stepping stone towards Class 4, a codename for a project that was intended to be an online MMO. However, when Undead Labs continued its partnership with Xbox Game Studios, those MMO ambitions in Class 4 never materialized. State of Decay 2 built upon the foundation of what Undead Labs started and added co-op. However, it was far from an MMO. So the assumption was that State of Decay 3, backed by Microsoft's full support and funding, now that Undead Labs is a part of Xbox Game Studios, would be the zombie MMO it was always intended to be. While Undead Labs hasn't commented on State of Decay 3 or what type of new game it is, Strain only left the company in April of this year, so he likely has a good idea of what state the game is in and the core foundations of the sequel, which are being built for the Xbox Series X and S console generation. Strain has a history with MMOs. Founding Guild Wars developer ArenaNet in 2000, Undead Labs was originally intended to have that MMO foundation too. However, for whatever reason, that vision for State of Decay ended up being pushed back. Hopefully, the third time will be a charm and Stave Decay 3 can be the zombie MMO simulator that Undead Labs initially set out to create, or at least get us one step closer. Matt Booty, the head of Xbox Game Studios, directly addressed the need for third-person cinematic games when asked directly about PlayStation's biggest games over the past decade. I think I, I tend to come at that less of one of those and more making sure that we are paying attention to fan expectations right and i think that there's a there, there's a certain kind of game that generates an anticipation that kind of becomes this big tentpole moment it's a game that fits that intersection that everybody can play uh and it's also a big world that you feel like you can have you know you can inhabit um and i think those kind of games are important uh and certainly you know it's been a place where we have not been out in front we haven't really had the sort of one-to-one -one with uh, sony there i don't necessarily want to get into what's our uncharted What's our Horizon Zero Dawn? What's our this? What's our that? Like, I don't think that does anybody any good, but I, you hit on a great point, which is what I take away was what are those games that have got universal themes, that have got a big world that people want to get lost in, that have really well-realized characters and really high production values? That is absolutely what uh, you know, we want to go after. And uh, Phil did uh, an interview yesterday, I think, with the Wall Street Journal, and he was talking about, look, we're not done, <laughs> right? We're still growing. The game games industry is growing. Xbox is growing. And so we studios are going to have to grow along with that. And uh, making sure that we've got those kind of games for our fans is important to us. The unique offering of a diverse studio set and all of the different genres covered by Xbox Game Studios and the ZeniMax Edition brings a wealth of games for Xbox in this console generation alone. The need for third-person, cinematic blockbuster games is definitely there, and looking at the studios working on games that meet this criteria is very promising for Xbox fans that want the best of both worlds on Xbox or PC. In 2022 and 23, we will see the first wave of blockbuster games coming out, and then, hopefully by then we'll see what these new studios can do under full management and direction of Xbox. Even if you're unsure if there is something here that covers the type of game you really need to see from Xbox, it sounds like Phil Spencer is not done bringing in new talent to the Xbox Game Studio team, and that means even more big games for Xbox now and in the near future. This is Cold Eastwood. Thank you so much for checking out this video. It's been very difficult to try and show or illustrate what these games will look like or what they will be without seeing them. And there have been a few games like this wild card for Compulsion where they haven't shown us what this new game is other than the dark fantasy, third person, action adventure, story based game, something Xbox has needed for a long time. But there are many more games that I've covered in other videos, so I'd really suggest you give those a check out. They're on the channel. There's a lot of them about these Xbox Studios exclusives, so I'll link a couple here at the end of the video. If you want to further support the channel, you can do that by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit that bell to be notified of new weekly content. 
And if you want to do more, you can also join the channel membership or the channel Patreon. Both of those will get you access, early access to videos before they go up live. And that gets you into giveaways I do every month on the channel for merch. Also, the XNC podcast has been going every Monday. I like to show people that that's on the channel so they know what the big, long one to two hour videos are on the channel. That's where I interview industry people and people that are in the community. So check that out. But I want to know what you're most excited about with this. What do you think about State of Decay going more of a big, open, free roaming MMO? And what do you think about Compulsion Games? Do you think they can deliver that big game with that big budget now that they're with Xbox? Let me know in the comment section, and while you're there, be nice.